<laughs> Welcome to another Book Monsters 11 video. I'm Sav. I'm Sar. And we are here today. We're going to do a Paper Towns movie review. Woo! <laughs> I am always up to review John Green's. Just saw. She's seen Paper Towns, what, like three times? I've seen Paper Towns three times. I just saw it for the first time yesterday. We are going to give our thoughts, kind of overview what we thought about Paper Towns. I've read the book multiple times. It's one of my favorite John Green books. I've I have read it not completely all the way through. All right. So this kind of a different perspective, I guess, on the movie, which will be cool. This movie was really, really good. I thought it was like equally as good as Fault in Our Stars. It's really different, so it's hard to kind of compare really them. Is. And I think it's more of a um, movie you could watch all the time. Fault in Our Stars, you have to emotionally prepare yourself. Like I feel like Paper Towns, it had a lot of depth in it that they didn't really acknowledge. They really could have embraced that a lot more. There were a lot of layers that they didn't really unfold that I really wish they would have. The whole idea of the perfect future and finding yourself, um, you know, Margot moves away to a completely different place and they kind of didn't really touch on her story as much as I wished they would have. I think Cardi Levine did a really, really good job yes. of being Margot. I was a little bit skeptical when I heard she was cast because I've never seen her act before, but she did an amazing job. She made me like Margot, which was better because I did not like Margot in the Margot, to me, she was really selfish and I didn't think that was very, wasn't a good character trait. Um, and in this, in the movie, she made herself likable yet still seemed distant and not who she really was. And I think they did a good job about conveying how she didn't know who she was. I think that, especially with Lacey, you get a lot of like teen popular party, you know, kind of stories out there. But Lacey, with Mar being Margot's best friend and everything, they really gave her character a lot more depth than I expected them to. And it was really refreshing to kind of see that like she is a person too. Yeah. And she kind of, you know, didn't it follow the crowd as much as everyone expected her to and she kind of just took a step back and was like I'm my own person. It, it wasn't the typical you know stereotypical blonde dumb like party girl it was she had a lot of depth to her and really wanted to be seen as someone not typical not just a fun party girl she wanted to be seen as smart and witty and her and beautiful like she wanted to be seen as everything which I thought was good and I feel like Margot and Lacey would have connected a lot more with this new version of Lacey coming out if Margot hadn't left. Yeah. But I do think that all the characters were really well developed. Um, ben, in particular, Ben's one of my favorite characters, <laughs> but you got to see uh, during the end of the movie, he tells Lacey some stuff that I don't think anyone expected him to come out and say this right to her. And I think it was really refreshing because he was kind of a, a comedic relief sometimes. Um, but it was nice to see a deeper part of him and to kind of see his, his like acknowledgement of Lacey's kind of journey to be this different person. Let's talk about Nat Wolf. Nat Wolf is the best and he can transform into any character and that was really important for me because he's one of those actors where you see him and you're like, oh, there's Nat Wolf. But in this yeah. movie, you really didn't see Nat Wolf. You saw Quentin, you saw this kid who was kind of nerdy and kind of shy and like yeah. was just trying to figure out who he was and trying to figure out this girl that he thought he loved, that he thought was like perfect for him. It was very different from when he played Isaac in The Fault in Our Stars because Isaac was very just there. He was confident, he was sure of himself, he was just existing as a character and it was very influential to the other two but there wasn't really a lot of development but he really like progressed through the movie just beautifully I think it was yeah. awesome and it was so impeccably done the music everything was so great um I think the ending for me was better than the book yeah because there was a part where it made me happy that the ending turned out the way it did because you know he found out what was really important I always felt that the ending was just kind of odd. Like, the ending, I honest, but for the book, I honestly, I thought that Margot might have like killed herself. Like, it was, did you get that impression? 
Um, well, I didn't really read the book that thoroughly. Okay. But because no, she I leaves, didn't. like, these clues. There's this line where he's like, is Margo, do you think Margo's okay? And I think that kind of led into my, like, into people's minds, like, is she not okay? Like, she might not be okay. The ending of the movie was good, but more satisfying than the book. And I, I wish they had acknowledged more that, um, they said that throughout all the time she's left, she always leaves clues for Ruthie. And this time she left, and he said, but she's never left clues for me, and this time she did. Um, I do think, though, that it was a little bit strange that she would have left him clues and not expected him to do anything other than just know where she this was. Then the Book Monsters 11 Favorite Towns Review. We hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Follow our Instagram for updates, you know, book recommendations, funny text posts, things like that. Yeah, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! Bye.